Good morning. You know, every once in a while I get lucky and uh, I happen to be in our Fort Langley location and I ran into this real estate star <laughs> with some people in the area would know for sure. So I'm with Cody Bugini. Did you I say that? No, you're one of the first people and few that have nailed it. So Well, I if I it. nailed it right, it's just because I grew up in St. Leonard in Montreal where I'm surrounded by Italians. So um, <laughs> that, that may be what, what happened. So, Cody, you know, you and I have never had ch sit down and really chit chat. Like, what was your journey? How did you end up? How did you end up from wherever you were in yeah. the, into being like one of the top agents in the area? How did yeah. That so, honestly, simple form of that is started started with uh, working with my friend's dad, Dean Hoosman. Um, yeah, he approached us about eight years ago. Said, if you want to slowly start taking everything over from me, that's kind of where we're going to be. So, I started off with his son, both of his sons actually, our assistant, and the two of us. Fast forward eight years, and now I am taking everything over from Dean. Both his sons have left the business. Now I'm working on elevating it and taking it to the next level. Well, you know, it's funny you should say that because one of, the, one of my topics that I like to talk about is how you can fast track anything in life if you have a mentor. So you just basically finished telling us that you fast track not being in real estate to being successful in real estate because you mentored you had a mentor called dean who's absolutely you want, you want to say anything about the mentorship pro absolutely you know? so i would to carry on with ray's point there i strongly strongly agree and advise you that if you're starting off in the business it's very competitive and then there's so much uncertainty you know you get information bits and pieces from different people that you don't really know so you're trying to figure it out put it all together definitely find yourself a mentor so fortunately for me my mentor found me and honestly, to this day, even though he's not as active and involved in the business, I talk to him at least two or three times every day. Wow. No matter what. And it's just to shoot, shoot ideas past him, get his opinion on how I'm handling certain situations and transactions. And honestly, it's been great. But my one take would be don't just focus on a men mentor within your industry. I've found other mentors outside of my industry and they add tons of different forms of value and yeah, honestly, like I'm, I'm really happy with where we're situated right now. So, Cody, um, how many eight years you said you've been in eight the business? Years. Eight years. Yeah. So, in in the eight years you've been in the real estate business, for somebody who say let's like, not even in the business, um, was there what are the what are the biggest ahas and maybe even surprises after you got into real estate that you were like clueless about? <laughs> That's a really good question, actually. Um, my biggest aha moment personally for me was being comfortable in my own skin. So I find this, especially with younger agents or even newer agents, let's put it that way, is everyone has a perception of what real estate is. They come in and feel like that's the perception and persona they have to live up to. So what I mean by that is like, I'm sure there's people out there that have watched million dollar listings, selling sunset, and they have this false interpretation of what real estate is. Then they join the business and they're like, wow, this is not really what I thought. People think it comes to you, you know, and I feel like, yeah, in certain markets, that is the case and it does work. But my biggest aha moment was I came into real estate thinking it was one thing. And then as time went on, I was like, hey, this isn't what it was. And now I find that I'm not being my true self and carrying out these values and these missions and just working on the day to day. And then one morning I literally woke up and I was like, I am completely going to be myself and that's what it's going to be. And if people don't want to work with me because of that, then that's fine. I respect that. But my business went like that. And that was my biggest takeaway was like really be comfortable in your own skin and find your own rhythm. Stuff works for different people, but find what works for you and your little mix or recipe. And that's, I love that. So, you know, one of the things I say to uh, people that are thinking about getting into the, the business that we're in, uh, is that they're, most of them are coming from a job. They work at a job, they're an employee. So then they end up here in real estate and it's quite different. What would you say to people relative to what are you going to have to change in your thinking? What are some of the thinking oh, mental changes you had to make? You have to be self-disciplined. That's, that's my, and self-motivated, if that makes sense. So like for me personally, since a young age, I've been very self-disciplined and very self-motivated. I don't need people to motivate me or pump me up. Like in the discipline part, so I, I really value what Ray said because when I first started in real estate, I worked with Dean. Dean's very good at generating business. So for seven years of my career, business was just coming in the door. And for me, I started taking that for granted. And now I'm just focusing on servicing those clients. Whereas now I'm responsible for generating the business. And if I had applied the mindset I have now towards generating business back then, I would have been 
doing 10 times better than where I'm at right now. I'm glad you said that because, you know, I, I've said oftentimes to people that in the real estate business, when you get your license, nobody tells you exactly. that your, your new job is not writing contracts. That's like the obvious. Your new job is generating clients. Always. Right? Yes. yes. 100%. If you're not making the money, you're not getting paid. So. so, do you have any advice for people that are thinking, maybe I should do this? I would say, yeah, like just really know what you're getting into. So you know what I mean? Like I have several, even our own clients that are interested in getting into real estate, they'll call me and say, hey, Cody, like, can I sit down with you? Can I take you for coffee? Can I pick your brain? So they'll pick my brain, ask me a bunch of questions. Then I've extended the invitation to people to say, hey, why don't you come with me for like two, three days? Come see what it's like, like actually on the day to day. And I've also helped some of our new agents in our office. They've reached out to me and I've taken them along on week or two week treks and they're just, every day seeing what it's all about and they've they've told me so many times they learned way more doing that than just reading a book or looking at someone else's interview online like i feel like try to get as much real life experience and information that you can before you start so is it possible that somebody like yourself could um you know put all the systems in place and have so much business that you probably at some point may need another agent to help absolutely you absolutely so we're in that stage right now is with Dean kind of migrating out of the business and being less involved. I now have the same responsibilities and work scope as if like now I'm just me, right? Like there's no Dean now. There's no. So physically wise, I've, I've hired an assistant. She's been absolutely amazing. And I value her very much because we're very family oriented as a team. So my hope for her is not only are you going to help me grow, but I want to help you grow. So now she's in the process of slowly beginning her license. And now she'll transition eventually to an agent working with myself, and then she'll train our new assistant. Well, it's Cody, it's funny. I don't know if anybody told you this, but uh, because what you just touched on is like a golden gem. <laughs> I try to tell this to people all the time, that if you want to grow a team, the number one person you have on your team is an admin person. Always. And then the admin person could, if she's so wired, become a, an agent, but then you got to, you got to fill the spot. You, you got to fill that spot because without an admin person, you can't do what you do best. And you need somebody who can do the other things you, you and I are 100%, good at. hundred percent, hundred percent. And one thing to add on to that, I feel is so many times I see a lot of turnover from an admin standpoint within teams. Like, okay, we got a new assistant and now she's out and we got another one in two years she's out. But for me, like I really want to cultivate the growth and like, so for our hiring process of bringing Becca onto the team was a year long. The timing was never perfect, but I knew she was the person, the kind of person I wanted. And she fortunately did not go elsewhere and waited for the opportunity from us to open it to her. And right away from the get-go, we aligned with our vision, our mission, and like she's looking for a long-term partner to be in real estate with. That's what we're looking for. And so as long as we show we care about her, it's all good. <laughs> so this was a, kind of an impromptu visit. Uh, you have any questions for me before I leave? I do. My one question for you would be, throughout your all the years and experience that you've been in this industry, what's one tip that you find you can apply to any market no matter what's going on in real estate so the one tip that i have for you is that we are in a people business and and really anybody that's in sales of any sort you're in a people business but in our business we're in a people business and if you're in a people business you have to have a lot of systems in place to touch all the people you know so I have an example from today. So from today, I'm preparing my mailing list. I, I say I usually send calendars to all my mm -hmm. past clients that are in the area, right? And I'm getting that ready. And every year, I have to go over the list and make sure that all the addresses are correct, that all the people that are on the list are still alive. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, there may be things I have to tweak. But in the process of doing that, I, I'm always going to realize there's somebody I haven't touched base with for quite a while. So here I am this morning sending some messages to people on my list. The point is, the tip is this, when you have systems in place to care for your people, mm -hmm. part of those systems are going to lead you to stay in touch with them all the time. Exactly. You know, one of the, one of the great questions that all of us in sales should ask people that we meet with, after we meet with the people and we do everything we're going to do, the question I always ask is, who do you know that I should know? That's a great, that's a great question. You know, because those yeah, people, yeah, I, like I, I know these people, but those people know five, six, seven, eight people. 
And there's probably people that they know that I don't know that exactly. I should know. Exactly. So there's my tip. I like that. I like that. I'm going to start applying that now. <laughs> well, have a great uh, rest of your week, rest of the year. Are you on track to hit your goals this year, Cody? Absolutely. Right on track. And next year, we're going to surpass them by a mile. We're pumped. Okay. You know, that was a kind of like, I, I just threw that question at Cody. We didn't rehearse any of this. But the majority of agents today, they're not only off track, they probably are in shock that they aren't going to accomplish what they wanted to accomplish in real estate. Mm -hmm. This guy's on track to surpass it. So what's he doing that's a little different? Maybe you should give him a call. I'm happy to talk to you. Happy to help. Have a great day. Take care.